It's a secret. Shut up. It's a secret. Shut up. To get Tarasenko out of St. Louis and to a new club. Now, we've been hearing a lot of different teams that have entered the mix that have gone out of it. It doesn't sound like Phillies there at this stage. The New York Rangers, New York Islanders, and New Jersey Devils. Like what? Uh, it's a secret. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you can, you can let us all know, Lou. It's okay. So all, all is quiet on the Lou front. Uh, Anthony, can you uh, get some information out? Um, I mean, <laughs> I know like all the, you know, league wide, they, they, you know, as we stated numerous times, they make the jokes about Lou Mafia and horse heads. And, you know, it, I feel like only Lou can get away with this type of thing. I mean, the, you guys heard all the reports. The, the reports are that he's already signed. He's already come to contract agreements with, with Kyle Palmieri, Casey Zegas, Travis Ajak and signed Zach Parise, but he hasn't filed any of the contracts with the league. Um, and you haven't heard a peep from the agents, the players. Uh, I, I don't know how he pulls it all off. I, I guess they really do fear him about being crossed. But, um, you know, the, the speculation is, and again, no one knows, but the speculation is that the reason why he's doing this is because he's working on other things, you know, i.e. trades, um, and he doesn't want any teams to know what his cap situation is like. Because obviously if you file the contracts, then it gets out and then you see where the team sits with the cap. Without filing the contracts, teams don't really have an idea of how much money he spent so far. Um, and listen, at this point, who knows when he's going to let these these deals be announced. I guess it's when, you know, when one of these moves he's working on comes to fruition. But uh, yeah, right, right now it's radio silence uh, with Lou, and you know this is just, this is just the way he is. And you know, I've 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 seen like people on Twitter talk about how you know the league should do something about it because then, as we said before, copycat league that other other GMs might do it, and if that happened, it would bring the league to a halt because then there'd be no movement, and the league should intervene and not let him do this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean. He's not doing anything legal in the CBA, I guess. So they're just Lou's going to continue to be Lou. And uh, but yeah, as of as of right now, technically the Islanders haven't signed anybody or, or made any moves. So um, <laughs> your guess is good as mine on what he's got cooking up. But we all know it's something. We just don't know exactly know what it is. I'll say two things in regard to that to start. One, if there's anybody who's as good with manipulating things like that and the CBA and anything like that, it's the man who helped make it, and that's Lou Lamorello. Lou Lamorello just – he he got himself out of Vladimir Malakov, Dan McGillis, and Alexander McGillney in 2006. I, I, I couldn't believe he did that with only giving up one first-round pick to San Jose to move Malakov's contract there. Um, I will say the other thing is that any deals that are agreed upon – they have to go through central registry. So if there was something agreed upon and it wasn't announced, it, it would be announced. It would be leaked because it would have to go through central registry. So, um, yeah, I, Lou technically hasn't done anything illegal. Um, he's just, he's just smart. He's just <laughs> smart. He knows yeah. how to, he knows how to manipulate stuff like this. Um, <laughs> Someone just commented. Uh, uh, I, I heard uh, Lou is a, a Lou. I was just about the Kyle. I like that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll but, uh, <laughs> but, oh my god! I mean, <laughs> is he a mobster or an Illuminati? Could he be both? <laughs> could he moon? Could he moonlight as one or the other? I mean, Lou Lamorello is a genius, man. I mean, some of his moves in the last, you know, the last <clears throat> the last fifteen or so years, you could you could probably. Um, you could, you could question them, but, I mean, when it comes down to it, he's still smart. And, yeah, Big Lou is definitely in waste management, Sean. So, uh, I, I think the uh, I think the Sopranos reference yeah. made before is pretty uh, – yeah, is uh, pretty accurate. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and Illuminati. Yeah, we can, we can call it that from now on uh, if you want. But I, I think the Islanders definitely have something up their sleeve. I think Lou is brewing something as we speak. Um, Anthony, I remember when um, – 
we were doing off the post and we got that word that um, Mr. Lamorella was on the island and we heard about that before anybody else did. So, you know, he operates in secrecy. That's just how he is. <laughs> and it's how he always will be. So um, yeah. Yeah. if something comes up, it's, it's going to come up out of the blue, out of nowhere. So, I mean, yeah. his, his off season so far, it's amazing. I'm, I'm actually going to say it's, it's, a, it's an A minus, even though they basically couldn't do anything in the draft. Uh, but you shed twenty million dollars of salary. It's unbelievable. And, we and he didn't. This. Uh, there was a tweet from a contributor of ours. Let's just say his his name is A. Loraco, and um, <laughs> it. He said it's great. We have an attractive team, an attractive destination, and nobody to get here. And sure enough. He Lou responds with, "Okay, let's clear us a salary cap." He got rid of the Andrew Ladd contract, which was an albatross, almost a literal albatross. <laughs> and he did it without giving up a first round pick. I mean, he did, I'm gonna have yeah. oh, they they actually I thought they didn't have any draft picks, Anthony, for next year. They they got their first and their second rounders. Yeah. So I mean, that's just. I, 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 I marvel at it and going, wow, that's great. How do you have a, an A minus in an off season when you didn't add anything but Zach Parise? Yeah. But and if anything, you lost well, some guys. Technically. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, technically, because it's 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 a secret. So um. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did so you, guys you, actually give... you? Go ahead. Did what? you give your grade? Oh me? Oh no, or I didn't, didn't either. No, I. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I guess. Listen, it, again, it's hard to grade somebody when they haven't technically done anything. But um, I, I mean, I gotta, I gotta like you. I, I guess I gotta give him an A minus. You know, he get he got rid of Letty and got a second round pick in return. He he traded Andrew Ladd without giving a first or giving up a guy like you know Bellows or even like a guy like Samuel Bolduc or Bodie Wild. I mean, and he's. Suppose, and he's managed to, like, again, if you believe the reports, he's managed to keep Paul Mary, keep Zizekas, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, you got to, you got to, I would say that's that's a fair grade, A minus. Um, and, I mean, I'll let, I'll let Phil give his grade before I before I go back to what their team looks like right now, hypothetically. But, yeah, I mean. Oh, go go so ahead, far, Anthony. So no, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. All right. So, if you, if you plug in all these players that he's supposedly reached deals with, um, you know, you got Lee Barzell, Wallstrom, Bovillier, Nelson, Bailey, Parise, Pajot, Palmieri, and then Martin Sezikis, Clutterbuck. The only hole still left on this this team is the spot left by Nick Letty because you have Pelik Polak as the first pair. Then you'll have Green Dobson as a third pair. And then the second pair is, you know, open and then Mayfield. So um, that's really the only the only pressing need he needs to fill. And when you look at the UFA market, the only realistic options on the left side are Sammy Vatanen or Eric Gustafson, who which aren't very good anymore. So I think it's clear that Lou is going to trade for a, a second pair of, you know, left-handed defensemen. Um, and maybe that's what he's working on. Who, who really knows? I know Arthur Staple uh, kind of gave out a list of potential targets. He listed Hampus Lindholm in Anaheim or Matthias Ekholm in Nashville and, you know, some other names. But um, that's that's the biggest hole. That's the biggest hole he needs to plug right now is that Nicoletti spot. All right, Phil, wrap it up. I'm going to say B+. Plus. I, I, I wouldn't I, – I was very tempted to say A-minus as well. But um, – I mean, the salary clearing was amazing. He just he did a masterful job of that. Um, he just really hasn't added anything to this point. And I know that the other guys are probably coming back. You're probably <clears throat> looking at you know Palmieri coming back. Parise, yeah, it's a depth addition. Um, I mean, Sezik is coming back, okay. I mean, it depends on what those contracts are like as well. Um, but he didn't add anybody on defense because now you got a hole in your top four. And... I mean, they didn't really add a, a big time scorer. I, I, I think that they should give Oliver Walsh from a chance. Yeah. And honestly, just keep the salary open because the next couple of years are going to be pretty challenging for the Islanders, I would say. So, um, 
if he adds somebody, let's just say he pulls off a of Vladimir Tarasenko, I think it goes from a B plus to an A, at least borderline A A plus. So um, I'm going to say B plus for now. But again, that's with this off season not being complete for them because I know it's not complete. I know there's a bunch, a slew of things that's going to happen real soon for them. So I'll I'll, I'll give them B a, a B plus for right now. I'll I'll okay. add quick. Um, uh, Elliot. Elliot Friedman, when he was talking about the Islanders the other day in his 32, now it's called 32 Thoughts podcast, um, <laughs> that the, the, rumor, the rumor is that he signed Zekas for six years at 2.5. So, um, you know, obviously gave, gave more term to bring down the AAV. Uh, you know, Zekas was making 3.35. So if indeed that's the contract, he took a little more than a million her in discount but got more years so um we'll see if that's you know what it actually turns out to be but that's what he said he was hearing okay i can't we can't leave on that if that's the case what's your thoughts on that like well six i want years? To, that's I, a lot of term. i want i wanted Sezikis back um you know as phil said he's the guy that that drives the motor on that fourth line um you know, he, he's he's the true identity of an islander it's like they say about matt martin and other guys um, you know, he's tenacious penalty killer. You know, he's physical, even though he's not a big guy. Uh, he, he can chip in offensively. Um, so listen, on the, on the open market, he was going to get, you know, a raise. Let's face it. I mean, I heard that Seattle, when they reached out to him, he ex Seattle for 5 million, maybe because that's, he, he knew that he wanted to stay and that's the only reason why he would have left. So he threw out a higher number, but I mean, I think if teams knew he was open to leaving, I think teams would probably would. Listen, it's a silly season, guys. Teams would give him four million, you know, a little bit of a raise. So, two point five, you know, I'll take it. As far as the term, yeah, it's a it's a little longer than I would like to go, um, but it's what they likely had to do to keep the player. So, and it didn't bark like good Joe gets six years. So it's sometimes you you have to you have to pay the price to get the guy that you want. So yeah, sure. A little longer, but you, you're keeping you're you're keeping him in the fold. So the one thing I'll say with with that, just I'll, I'll make this really quick. Goudreau was like like I said with Drury, lost the battle on all three fronts. Lou won the battle there because the AAV's down. But you guys just got to worry about it being a Ryan Callahan situation and his body breaking down because he's a smaller yet physical player. So by year four, that could be a problem if. He gets banged up, so. And uh, so the eye roll was because once again I lose the war against my tripod. So. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not using the tripod the today. I, can't, I, you know, I just it always happens. Well, guys, uh, I know we're mostly we got a huge Ranger crowd in there. And uh, what are your thoughts on the Islanders postseason or or off season so far? Uh, put it all down in the comments below. And again, you can always rewind to check out our interview with. Marty Biron. That was right. awesome. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's, it's yeah. still just music to my ears. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.